Great. Thank you so much. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you. The title of my presentation is Effectiveness of Localized Lockdowns in the COVID-19 Pandemic, and this is joint work with Igeli, who is a PhD student in Biostatistics, and Eduardo Murral, uh, an associate professor at Universidad Católica in Chile. Uh, this work is forthcoming in the AJE, and here uh, we addressed uh, one of these kind of like burning questions we had in Chile uh, about the effectiveness of localized lockdowns, more specifically um, of lockdowns that were applied in small geographic areas and uh, municipalities in Chile. At the time, we had limited evidence of the effectiveness of these types of lockdowns that were also implemented in other parts of the world. And we wanted to study this question while um, taking special consideration to the impact of the duration of the lockdown and also of spillover effects. More specifically, we wanted to estimate the direct effects of lockdowns in a municipality, the spillover effects of the lockdowns um, considering what's happening in the neighboring municipalities, and in this way compute this total effect of uh, the localized lockdowns, but also taking into consideration how they're modulated by, again, the duration of the lockdown. And for this, we use uh, data from Chile. More specifically, we use these three data sources that we put together. The first one from the Ministry of Health, that were these epidemiologic records, COVID-19 cases, defined as PCR-confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infections. We also use data from the CASEM survey in Chile, which is the National Socioeconomic Survey, to have a number of sociodemographic measurements of the households. And in addition, we had uh, data from the census uh, to try to take into account as best as possible uh, measurements at the level of the municipality, which was our unit of analysis. To give you a sense of things, here we have a map of Chile, here in panel A, and here we have the metropolitan region, the Greater Santiago, um, which is the capital of Chile, and we have different municipalities, which are these uh, geographic areas. In this center figure, uh, we're showing the, the number of cumulative cases by May 15, and here we're zooming in into um, these different um, municipalities, and what we're going to do is to estimate the impact of a lockdown on, say here in the center, the municipality of Providencia with a red diamond, so the, the impact of intervening on this municipality, but we're also taking into account the interventions around this municipality, the direct neighbors. Here we define the network of influence as the direct neighbors, but our approach allows us to do it in other ways too. All right? And here, the intuition, um, well, before the intuition, let me tell you a bit more about what's the study question, is that we want to estimate these causal effects of the lockdowns as we're kind of like sliding this window of the duration of the lockdown here, as we make it larger, okay? And at the same time, as we're sliding this, um, this window, if you wish, up and down, modifying the proportion of neighbors under lockdown. So here with a gray line, we're showing the um, proportion of neighbors under lockdown in a given municipality as it happened. This is what we observed. We're going to modify this and see what was the impact of that. At the same time, we're going to modify the duration of the lockdown. What would have happened if the duration at this key period uh, of the evolution of the pandemic, which were the first three months, those initial lockdowns would have been longer and more generalized. That's the idea. And here, I think that I can give you a better sense of things by showing you that video. You already know what happens. We're here, we have this map of the metropolitan region, all the different municipalities, and here we have a plot of the number of daily cases. And from the beginning of the pandemic here, you can see how the daily cases were increasing here. And here we see which municipalities were under lockdown. So we see that some municipalities were under lockdown uh, for very short periods of time, on and off, until the pandemic kind of like 
exploded and then the whole uh, city of Santiago uh, was, was under lockdown. So during the first three months of the pandemic, uh, we're going to estimate um, the impact of these localized lockdowns taking into account these two dimensions that I was mentioning. Here we are. And the intuition behind this um, methodology that we use is to build these synthetic or clonal municipalities. For, for example, here in the top left corner for Providencia, uh, we're going to try to build a clone municipality, a synthetic municipality that looks very much alike, like the municipality of Providencia, in terms of a list of sociodemographic factors, but also in terms of the seven day trajectories of treatments before the intervention. This I mean that the pattern of lockdown before the intervention, the pattern of lockdowns around the intervened uh, municipality, uh, and also the, the trajectory in the reproduction app, which is one of our two main outcomes. And to do this, we're going to use, of course, a synthetic control approach, more precisely, the augmented synthetic control approach that recently proposed in the literature, um, which unlike the usual synthetic control approach, allows us for a degree of extrapolation in building the controls, which is something we need here, given the nature of the data, to say it somehow. So that's the idea, and we do this for different municipalities in Chile. I'm going to focus on a couple of them to give you a flavor of the results, but we did it for several of them, and the story goes as follows. So first of all, after applying this synthetic control approach, where the idea again is to build this clone municipality, we were able to balance covariates quite well. Here I'm showing you for two municipalities, Providencia and Santiago, that the imbalances in the trajectories of R, the reproduction number, uh, the history of lockdowns in that municipality, and the proportion of people under lockdown in neighboring municipalities uh, was quite well balanced after the weighting done by the synthetic control. And we see similar patterns for other municipalities. But the idea is that we are adjusting for observed confounders in, in this way. And using those weights from the synthetic controls, then what we did was to estimate the trajectory that Providencia would have followed, for example, had the lockdown been increased for three more weeks. And at the same time, had we increased the proportion of the population under lockdown in neighboring municipalities. So we're sliding the window like this, as we're showing here, and also this gray line, we're raising it up here. Okay, so what we see is, well, two sets of results, to the left for the reproduction number and to the right for the incidence. Uh, we see, let's look at the incidence, um, that the number of cases would have been substantially lower had this lockdown been longer, and also had the lockdown been more general in, in the sense of like acting on the neighbors as well. Which is something we expect, of course, but here we're doing our best to quantify that. The study in Santiago is not that similar. We see a huge effect of the duration of the lockdown, uh, but a comparatively smaller effect of these um, spillovers uh, because Santiago is a highly interconnected municipality. Okay, you may be a bit confused here. In Santiago, there are two Santiago's, the city of Santiago and the municipality of Santiago. Here I'm talking about the municipality of Santiago. It's kind of the heart of the city. Okay, and because of this interconnectedness, we're not seeing a lot of that effect. But wait a second, because uh, these developers are going to be really important, as we say, to control the pandemic in the case of this um, geographic region. Uh, in short, these effects represent a 33 to 62 percent reduction in reported cases in this time frame, um, and these reductions uh, would have been even larger if it was possible to control lockdowns also in, in neighboring municipalities. Uh, before I show you this exercise, kind of like varying things along one um, dimension, uh, we repeated this exercise varying the proportion of neighbors under lockdown from 0 to 1, um, extending the days of lockdowns from 0 to 15 days, and, and we get this surface, which if we project in one dimension here, we, we see what would have been the trajectory of Providencia, how we extended um, 
the, the log down from 0 to 14 days from red to blue. And similarly, um, for Santiago, but here the surface for Santiago is way more um, steep, you know, like, um, where we see a much bigger effect of here the, the duration of the log down. So here for each bar in this surface, we, we solve one of the synthetic control problems yeah, we solve a bunch of them to get the total surface. Then we ask the question, um, kind of like, what does it take like to control the epidemic in the city of Santiago uh, in terms of the reproduction number? And for this, uh, we estimated the trajectory of the reproduction number at three levels. The level of a municipality in red, here's the case of Union, a cluster of municipalities in orange, here in the northeast of the region of the, of the city, and also at the level of the whole city. And, and the takeaway is, well, of course, that localized lockdowns help in terms of controlling the, the, uh, the spread of the pandemic. But we're only able to reach a reproduction number that is below one um, when we act at the level of, of the city. And we see this at the three levels of geographic aggregation. It's only when we act at this total level where the whole city is painted blue where we're able like, to control this better. So, what did we find? We found that the, these effects of localized lockdowns are strongly modulated by the duration of the lockdown and affected to a less extent, but to an important extent, by what happens with spillovers. Um, extending localized lockdowns uh, help a great deal, but by themselves alone, in the case of this geographic region, uh, they're insufficient uh, to control epidemic growth due to this indirect effect. So, this was at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, kind of like in the middle of the pandemic, uh, lockdowns in Chile started being more generalized, and, and I think that we saw uh, uh, better results. Um, here's some references. Here's a reference for our paper, and all the data and R code that we use here is available in case you want to replicate this stuff. I have to thank our, our, our founders here. So, thank you a lot. Thank you so much. We have an easy question from the audience. Can you please share the reference of the publication? <laughs> so, if, if you have a, a, the reference, or we can post it. Um, and also, I think for the map, the, those join uh, via Zoom. We're not able to see the map, so we're going to send them the, the, the link for them to, to see it. Uh, any, any question from the audience? Here? Well, you think about it, I have a question like, um, in your example, and uh, like the, the first, the prior examples, so we don't have a, a randomized trial to compare to. Um, if randomization were possible, if you uh, if you didn't have any constraint and you could do a randomized trial, uh, sorry, which, would be, which would be the corresponding target trial for a study? Uh, that's a great question, and actually a, a question that motivated our work. Uh, what we wish to do in this study is to provide uh, complementary evidence to the very valuable evidence provided by more structural approaches to modeling the strength of, a, 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 of a, 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 the progression of a disease. So our approach is not kind of excluded, it's complementary, and it was motivated by that question. Um, kind of like trying to uh, emulate or approximate that randomized experiment that we would have ideally done. And, and in this case, with synthetic controls, here we're envisioning uh, a randomized experiment of clone municipalities, a population of clone municipalities, where we're randomly assigning them uh, at each time point uh, 
to be under lockdown or not, and at the same time to have neighbors that have a given dose in the sense of what's their proportion of the population under lockdown. So it's, it's that kind of like experiment on this population on, of municipalities where treatment is by variety in a way. More than that, because one category is continuous. When we're trying to identify competitors for a drug treatment, we think hard about why would doctors use my drug over another, and you look at our data to say, well, we captured that and that's balanced. Do you have a sense of what in Santiago causes a lockdown or causes a lockdown to stop? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we discussed this briefly in the paper. In the beginning of the pandemic, there was um, a criteria which was not followed by the book, as, as one can imagine, in a state of emergency like this one. Uh, some of them pertain to, of course, um, the incidents, um, also the available of um, resources from a healthcare standpoint. Um, also, for example, the socioeconomic variables like overcrowding and so on in, in housing in, in, in those areas. And, and we did try our best to adjust for as many of those as possible. Uh, we have a backup slide with the exact variables that we adjust for, which are here. So we have a sense, we don't have an exact sense, and this is what we adjusted for. Thank you. We have a couple of questions in the, in the chat. In the chat, I will read them to you. Um, how did you deal with the endogeneity of lockdown implementations? Um, that's a good question that I think comes from an economist. Miguel Serra Maria is to yes. explain. <laughs> Miguel Serra. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I was joking because of the use of the word endogeneity. Uh, I don't know. That, that, that's a really uh, good question. Um, the validity of our analysis here is predicated on the assumption of non measured confounders, so to speak. Uh, so, to the extent that adjusting for these covariates produces an as if randomized experiment, our causal effect estimates will be causal. Um, Ideally, we would have also done a sensitivity analysis to unmeasured confounders. Um, but I'm not, the, I'm not aware of off-the-shelf sensitivity analysis for synthetic control methods. So I think that's a good question. Um, uh, the validity of our analysis is predicated on adjusting for these covariates. Um, perhaps future methodological work would be that, to, to work on sensitivity analysis methods for synthetic controls. There's one question about um, how how you choose the clone municipality. If you use any type of um, geometrical any geometrical compatibility method, how would you choose the, the municipalities? Right. So uh, for the intervention municipalities, we try to analyze as many as them as possible in terms of our ability to finding good enough controls. So then the question is, what determines uh, the synthetic controls? What determines the weights that are used to build that synthetic control? And that's our ability to find from the data good enough balance um, without doing too much extrapolation, basically. So it comes from the data. Okay. Um, oh, one question. Um, I was thinking if you did look at the spillover effect the other way around. So, if you had a lockdown in the city of interest or in the municipality of interest, did that affect the neighboring municipalities too? In the other, so, if there weren't a lockdown, but then they also have a spillover effect of the lockdown in the other municipalities? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. This kind of like data structure offers many possibilities to, to do many such analysis, and that one is a very interesting one. I'm asking because I saw a 
saw a European study, I think it was published in Nature last, last year, from, from London, but uh, they looked at different countries and they kept seeing that Sweden, although they didn't have a lot of uh, non-pharmaceutical uh, expansions towards COVID, they always had an effect and they thought it had something to do with the general idea of COVID in Europe. Oh. Yeah, it was just a, a thought. Great thought, thank you. One last question from um, what do What do you assume about the functional form of the effect of the neighbors on in the focal municipality? And do you think um, that is an effect on the transmission rate or rather an effect on the cases? Well, that's a good question. Um, That's a good question. So let me take a step back. Uh, what, what we're doing with this methodology is um, predicting the um, transmission of, of the disease um, from the data uh, using the seven days histories of lockdowns, lockdowns in the neighbors, um, the Rs, and also all these baseline so, uh, sociodemographic characteristics. Um, the idea is that similar seven days histories in their uh, conjunction are going to tell us what happens after uh, day seven on day eight. Um, so we're trying to uh, learn that from the data without imposing um, those parametric assumptions. Okay. But I have to acknowledge something, that when we commit to a given form of covariate balance, we're often implicitly assuming a mode. So I want to say that our approach is in principle um, less parametric, but I have to think more carefully about what's the implied uh, form that we're assuming. And the more structured. I think that's a great question. So we'll continue the conversation. This is uh, Rene News, so you can continue offline. Okay. Um, so uh, thank you very much okay. for the amazing, like it was called Magical Presentation with all of you. So uh, congratulations for your work. Thank you.